Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Two jets fly toward each other in opposite directions. One jet flies at 582 miles per hour and the other jet flies at 625 miles per hour. If they are 22 miles apart, how long until they meet? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's just take one more look at the question before I show you the answer. So we have these two jets and they are flying toward each other in opposite directions. So one's maybe coming from the east and the other one is coming to uh, coming from the west. So this is something like you might see at an air show. So one of these uh, jets fly at 582 miles per hour. The other is going 625 miles per hour. Now, if they are 22 miles apart, okay, how long until they pass each other or meet? Because hopefully they are not going to collide. And in my math word prom, these jets are going to safely <laughs> meet and pass by one another. Again, like something you would see in an air show. All right, so that is the problem. I think pretty much everyone understands it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the correct answer is one of these numbers right here. Of course, they're equivalent. So uh, something around 0 0.018 hours, and that translates into about 1.08 minutes. So if you have either one of these answers, what it indicates to me that you know what you're doing and you were able to solve this problem successfully. So you're going to get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of figuring out rate time, distance, motion type of problems. These are very common type of math problems. And if you didn't get this right, don't despair. This is not that difficult. But uh, we do need to understand a couple concepts in this problem, uh, namely one concept that may have given some of you uh, some trouble, but you need to also understand a particular formula. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So first things first, first we are dealing with a lovely math word problem. So always use the rule of three, which of course is to read the problem at least three times. Now, you know, I've read the problem a couple of times uh, for you here and kind of accentuated the details to kind of paint a nice picture of what's going on. But oftentimes you're not gonna have that luxury of someone reading the prom to you. So you have to read the prom and you're gonna wanna read the prom at least three times and you really need to understand the question. Now, what, you know, where can you find the question uh, in a math problem. Now, this seems kind of like, you know, obvious. You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, just look for the uh, question mark and then back up, and you would be correct. So in this particular um, problem, we want to know how long until these jets pass by one another until they meet. But sometimes um, the questions to a math problem are kind of buried in uh, the middle of the problem. So again, just don't assume that you're going to be able to read the, pro uh, the problem one time and uh, you know detect hey, exactly where the question is at. It could be a little bit deceiving, so be careful. Okay, so now that we understand the question, what we want to do is model the information in the question because if, uh, you can model it, particularly if you can visualize it, well, then you can see the solution. All right, so what can we do here? Well, the best thing to do is to come up with a quick little sketch that represents the situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at my sketch. Now, hopefully, you know, you're in the habit of, you know, kind of sketching out or visualizing prompts. And if you are not, well, anytime you have an opportunity where you can visualize a prom, especially like, again, uh, motion type of prompts, then you need to do that. It's just very helpful. So here is basically the situation. Okay, so we have these two jets. One is going this way, 
One is going this way. They're coming from opposite directions. doesn't make a difference if they're coming from north, south, east, west. They are going to be passing by one another nice and safely, something that you would see at an air show. All right, so one of these jets is going 582 miles per hour. The other jet is going 625 miles per hour. Now, if these jets, in just kind of this snapshot of time, are 22 miles away, we want to know how long until, uh, how much time until these two jets pass one another uh, whizzing by. Okay, so that is, that's effectively the problem. But now that we understand the problem, we're like, okay, well, that's great, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You know, how do I figure this thing out? Well, you're going to need to know a formula, right? And hopefully you know what this formula is. And if you don't, well, I'm going to show you it right now. Okay, so this is the formula that you absolutely want to commit to memory. And uh, this is what we call rate times time is equal to distance. So anytime you are dealing with any sort of motion type of problem, whether it be like a car or airplanes, trains, doesn't make a difference. It could be a little ball flying through the air. Anytime you have a problem that's dealing with motion, okay, like how fast is something going? How far did something travel? You know, what is the um how long did it take for something to travel? These are what we call motion problems, and they're very common in math and algebra, and particularly, you know, science classes like physics. So you have to master this simple formula. Rate times time is equal to distance. All right, so let's take a simple uh, example here. So if you have a car and it's going 60 miles per hour, this would be an example of a rate. So rate is basically velocity, speed, or just, quote, unquote, the rate of something, right? So if I wanted to say, hey, how fast this car is going, I could uh, also use the words, what is the rate of the vehicle or what is the velocity? Now, these uh, terms like velocity, uh, you know, speed, they, you know, there, there's some technical things involved, especially if some of you um, understand some physics because we're talking about what they call vectors. But that's not really that important for this particular thing, but these terms are fairly synonymous, okay? So rate implies speed or velocity. So let's just take this example. We have a car going 60 miles per hour. Now, if this car travels one hour, okay, what distance uh, will, uh, will the car go? Okay, well, 60 miles per hour, it's going to cover 60 miles per one hour. So times one hour, it's going to go 60 miles. Now, this 60 miles per hour right here, 60 miles uh, per hour, this is a rate, okay? And you could think of it this way, 60 miles uh, per one hour. This is technically the way you would want to write this. So miles per hour, again, is a unit of measure of a rate, okay? We're comparing two different units, two completely different units. We're comparing distance to time. Okay, so one thing that we really need to understand here is the following before we kind of get into the rest of this problem. So whatever your rate is, and again, if it's in miles per hour, well, we want our time to be measured with whatever time you're comparing in the rate. Okay, so in other words, miles per hour, we want our time to be in hours. And if that's the case, our distance will be in what? Well, it'll be in miles, okay? So you have to be very careful with units of measure. So for example, if you have meters per second and our time is in minutes, well, we'd have to convert minutes to seconds, okay? And of course, our distance would be in meters. All right, so hopefully this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, I think it will make sense as we get into this problem. All right, so this is the first kind of really important aspect of this um, uh, problem is that you understand you have to understand this uh, formula rate times time is equal to distance this is something that you definitely want to put into your long-term math memory just kind of put that in there for long-term storage there's a lot of formulas in math uh, but there's some that you need to commit to long-term memory this is one of them okay so now let's go ahead and take a look at this situation with the jets now what we have to understand here is that uh, this problem can be a bit confusing because we have two speeds going on. We have the speed of this jet here uh, going in this direction. Again, these are going in opposite direction, perfectly opposite directions. If they were not going in perfectly opposite direction, in other words, this jet's going this way 
and this jet is going this way. That's a different situation. But effectively, what we're dealing with here is something called vector mathematics. But I, that's, uh, you know, I don't want to get overly kind of, it, uh, you know, uh, advanced uh, in terms of uh, some of the math concepts. They, although vectors are not that difficult, but basically what we need to understand is that we have like a closure rate. So if you you know watched any of these little uh, jet movies like Top Gun, you know they they talk about closure rates. One jet's going this way, the other jet's going this way. Their combined speed, okay, their relative speed, is going to be the sum of their two speeds. So if this jet is going 582 miles per hour, and this this jet here is going 625 miles per hour. Well, this is uh, their relative speed, their relative uh, closure rate is actually uh, the sum of these two speeds, which is 1,207 miles per hour. So effectively, the uh, the speed at what they're uh, at which these two jets are closing is like having one jet fly at this speed, 1,207 miles per hour. So we can kind of distill this problem down to, well, how fast would it take a jet or how much time would it take a jet going 1,207 miles per hour to cover 22 miles? Okay, that's effectively uh, the same question as uh, what's going on here with these two jets closing in on one another. So it's the equivalent to one jet flying at 1,207 miles per hour, and we want to know the time it takes for that jet to cover 22 miles. All right, now, uh, now that you understand this aspect of the question, and you have this formula down, because we could, took a little bit of time to uh, you know cover this, you should have everything you need to know in order to figure this out. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish up this lovely problem. Now, uh, you know, I am not af afraid to ask for help or assistance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Certainly, I'm stopping this video and saying, hey, I need your help, okay? And the best way you can help me is to subscribe. Now, you might be saying, hey, why should I help you? Well, my goal, okay, I'm going to tell you why you should help me, and hopefully this is a compelling enough reason for you to hit that subscribe button. But uh, my whole channel, YouTube channel, is you know my whole mission is try to is try to make math clear and understandable. Math is just one of these notorious subjects that so many people just don't like, or you know it really plays on a lot of people's self uh, image or self confidence. And I know this because I've been doing this for many 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 years. A lot of people think that oh, I'm bad at math, uh, you know, and that can kind of translate into I'm not smart enough to learn this subject. And guess what? This is not true. This is not true. But a lot of people, because they struggle in mathematics, will start planting these ideas in their head. Like, hey, maybe there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay. And if you think that, well, I'm just bad at math and maybe I should just stick to, you know, whatever this subject, you know, again, there's serious consequences to not uh, being reasonably successful in any subject. Okay. But math just seems to be one of these, you know, subjects that people have a tough time with. So if you are struggling in math, please don't give up. You know, I'm just telling you right now, you can learn this stuff, but it does take a lot of hard work, okay? And you have to build your skill sets up one at a time. That is the truth. So if anyone is telling you um, anything different, like, hey, you could just learn, you know, uh, calculus in three days, well, they're just lying to you, all right? So be careful. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my full course instruction Um or my full courses, which I do my complete full instruction. That's what I meant to say. You can find links to all that in the description. So whether you're at pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra pre-calculus, geometry, it doesn't make a difference. Now, if you are not a math student, check out my math skills rebuilder course. That is a great course for those of you that want to relearn uh, math uh, starting from the very, very basics. Okay, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to uh, tell you what I'm all about. But now let's go to get back into this problem. Okay, so now that we understand this formula, rate times time is equal to distance, we can solve this problem. Again, uh, we have these two jets coming at one another. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, now, this speed, this rate, uh, this closure speed is the same as this one jet going super fast, right? As a matter of fact, it's going uh, 12, uh, 1,207 uh, miles per hour. Okay, so we're going to kind of think of the problem in terms of one jet going this fast, and now we want to know how long is this uh, jet going this speed, how long would it take 
to cover 22 miles, okay? So we know what our rate is, it's this, and we know what the distance is, it's this. So what we're looking for here is the time. So rate times time is equal to distance. So we can go ahead and plug in uh, the information into the formula, and then of course we'll solve for the unknown, which is t. Okay, we're looking for the time it takes for this jet to cover this uh, um, distance. And so let's go ahead and plug things in. So we got 1,207, that's our miles per hour. And by the way, let's notice our units of measure, miles per hour. So we have miles per hour, our distance is in miles, so that's awesome, miles and miles. So our answer is going to be in hours, okay? Our answer will be in hours. All right, so 1207 times T is equal to 22. So just a very basic algebra equation. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 1207. So when we do that, we get T, okay, is equal to 22 divided by 1207 is 0.018 again. Uh, we are talking about hours, right? So right here we have miles, okay, 22 miles uh, being divided by miles per hour, okay? So it's going to be divided by miles per hour. So if we look at the units of measure, when we divide a fraction, remember we flipped this fraction, so this is miles times hours over miles, and the miles cross cancel, and you're left with hours. So, you know, really important that you understand how to work with the units of measure. So that is the answer. So uh, these jets would take um, about 0 0.018 of an hour to pass by one another. But, you know, no one really wants to kind of, you know, say, hey, yeah, the jets will be here in 0 0.018 of an hour. So let's uh, turn this 0 0.018 of an hour into something that's a little bit more uh, you know, understandable in terms of uh, gauging how much time this takes. So we know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So let's just translate or convert this into minutes. So one hour is the same thing as 60 minutes. So 0 0.018 of one hour or 60 minutes is equal to what? Well, 0 0.018 times 60 is 1.08 minutes. Okay, so again, either one of these answers is fine. But uh, again, the whole point here is that, you know, we want to solve motion problems in mathematics. There's two things that you need to understand, okay? Uh, really, you know, you got to uh, really keep in mind. Now, this particular problem, we had these two jets flying at one another. So, you know, there is this concept of like a closure or vectors going on. So if you didn't understand it, that's fine. But the first thing is you need to understand this formula, rate times time is equal to distance. And the second thing is you have to be very mindful of units of measure. And a lot of students, I think, uh, think they understand units of measure actually better than they uh, they do. So the best way to kind of check yourself and make sure you, um, you know, really got this stuff is to practice, 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 right? It's You're not going to learn math by just doing a, an occasional prompt here and there. You, you might have fun with it, but if you truly want to build up your math skills, you have to first get some great instruction, and then you have to practice a wide variety of problems. So if you like word problems, go to my YouTube channel. I have a ton of them, and I'm always posting more uh, word problems. And you know, I try to kind of uh, space them out from basic math to advanced math. But if this particular video, uh, you know, was good for you, well, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.